In our next lesson on Chapter 16, Photosynthesis, we want to briefly summarize the Calvin cycle as well as look at its regulation as well as the process of photorespiration. First of all, let's review the fact that the main product of the Calvin cycle is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and it was pretty expensive to generate one molecule of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. We can use this in the synthesis of glucose or amino acids. We can convert it to pyruvate, then to oxaloacetate, and that can be used to make other amino acids. Remember the Calvin cycle consumes large amounts of ATP and NADPH. Both of these are produced in the light reactions. However, we need more ATP than we do NADPH. So we can see why we need both cyclic and non-cyclic electron flow in photosynthesis. We generate both ATP and NADPH in non-cyclic flow, but we can generate more ATP by converting to cyclic flow. We can measure then a quantum yield, which is a quantitative measure for the efficiency of our system. It's a measure of how many photons are absorbed versus how much carbon is fixed or oxygen released. We won't do be doing any of these calculations. Let's look at this process of photorespiration, which involves the O of our Rubisco enzyme, its oxygenase activity. The mechanism is similar to its carboxylase function. The substrate is the same. We're just going to add O2 instead of CO2, and that's illustrated at the top of the slide. Here's our ribulose bisphosphate. We're going to fix O2 to that same carbonyl carbon, except in the process, rather than generating a six carbon compound, we still have a five carbon compound. So when we hydrolyze the molecule, we're left with a three carbon, three phosphoglycerate, and a two carbon, two phosphoglycolate. The 2-phosphoglycolate is then metabolized and in that process we consume ATP and NADPH. We also generate CO2. This is why it's referred to as photorespiration because the plant takes in oxygen and generates CO2. The question is why would you want to carry out this process of photorespiration? After all, we're spending energy in the form of ATP and reducing equivalents, and we're not fixing any carbon. Well, it's a way to dissipate some of that free energy that's generated by the light reactions when there simply isn't enough CO2 for us to fix. Remember, if we produce, overproduce ATP and NADPH and we don't use those components because they are allosteric regulators they can shut down multiple pathways and so we need to restore balance and we do so through photorespiration that is to say the plant does so through photorespiration and therefore deplenishes its ATP and NADPH supplies. How is that Calvin cycle regulated? The primary factor is the availability of light. Photosynthesis and the Calvin cycle operate during the daytime. In other words, we need enough energy in the form of ATP and NADPH, which is generated through the light reactions of photosynthesis, in order to carry on the reactions of the Calvin cycle. So at night, we turn off the Calvin cycle, the so-called dark reactions, in order to conserve ATP and NADPH. And instead, we're going to turn on pathways that will regenerate these. We can use glycolysis to generate more ATP, and we can use pentose phosphate to generate more NADPH. So in other words, the dark reactions don't occur in the dark. Of course, they're called the dark reactions because there's no absorption of light required in running the Calvin cycle, but it is interesting that we can't run the dark reactions in the dark. Another key regulatory mechanism for the Calvin cycle is pH. In the process of carboxylation, we're going to make use of a key lysine residue and it needs to be deprotonated for carboxylation to occur, and this is favored at high pH. 
Remember, the pH is much higher than the pK of the residue, and so it is deprotonated and can be carboxylated. This is a signal that the light reactions are pumping protons out of the stroma, which means that within the stroma there would be a high pH. And that tells us that if the light reactions are running, we have enough ATP and NADPH to run the Calvin cycle. In our next video lesson, we want to see how plants store carbohydrates and in what form.